أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مبدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه تسليما كثيرا and telling us about the nature of Bani Adam, the Muslims and the non-Muslims alike Allah emphatically stated in the Quran وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَرِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ لِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ the people would not cease to have differences of opinion between them except for the people that Allah gave them rahmah. And for that reason, Allah created the people. He created them and they're going to have ikhtilaf, not going to be able to get away from it. But the one that Allah put rahmah in his house is the one who, him and his wife, if they have ikhtilaf, they can come to a common understanding that's in the best interests of the family. So we're all going to have ikhtilaf. And sometimes the ikhtilaf is normal. It's mustasaf, it's not blameworthy. It is possible and allowed for us to have ikhtilaf in the issue, whether it's the deen or the dunya. Umar radiallahu anhu, the Amir al-Mu'mineen, al-Faruq, he heard one of the companions reading the Quran, Surat al Hadid. And he heard the man read it. And he got ready to grab the man because he thought the man was doing ilhad. He thought the man was doing something treacherous, reciting the Quran in the wrong way. But he respected the fact that the man was in salat. So he waited till he finished. And then when he finished, he grabbed the man by his neck and took the man to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, he was reading the Quran in a way you didn't teach me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, let the man go, Umar. He said to the man, read. The man read Surah Al-Hadid. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, now you read it, Umar. Umar read the same surah, but he read it with a different qira'ah. The Quran has been revealed in seven ahraf. So if he reads it with one recitation, he reads the same surah with a different recitation, he reads the same surah with a third, that's ikhtilaf. But it's the ikhtilaf that is permissible in the deen. And that's why the Prophet told Umar, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran, this surah, has been revealed like this and like that. And there's ikhtilaf. Now the issue is, when we have ikhtilaf, the best thing is for you to solve the problem between you and that person, you and your wife. And don't go outside of the house. Don't let other people know about your situation. Because there are a lot of virtues. But today's khutbah is about what? Today's khutbah is not about not having ikhtilaf. It's about when there's ikhtilaf with people who we know, you have a religious, ethical responsibility to step in and to make peace. In this masjid, someone doesn't agree with what the imam did or said. He doesn't agree, there's ikhtilaf. So the person, the professor, comes straight to me and says, I don't think you should do this because of this and this and that. I say, no, I'm going to do it, and I think, because of this and this, and it's just between him and me. That's the best way. But everybody here knows someone who, two people or more have an ikhtilaf. And that ikhtilaf can lead to murder. It can escalate and it leads to murder. That ikhtilaf can lead to divorce. And once the divorce happens, it has a knock-on effect with the kids. They're Islam, they're akhlaq. So our community responsibility is that you have to get involved. You see two people having differences of opinion, your sister and her husband, you can't sit on the sideline and say, that's between them. You have to get involved. 
and you have to make islah. You have to be a mediator. You have to be a moderator. You have to be a Muslim. Even our youngsters who are here. You have friends in the school. You're only 15, 18, 22 years old, and you see friends of yours are fighting and having a problem. You have to get involved religiously. That's our deen. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Fattakullah wa aslihu dhat baynikum. You people, fear Allah and make peace between yourselves. You have to get involved. You can't stay on the outside. Also, from the virtues and the command of Allah Ta'ala, فَمَنِ اتَّقَى وَأَصْلَهَا فَلَا خَوْفَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ But one who has taqwa in his own self, and then he gets involved and he makes islah. He won't be afraid, يَوْمُ Kiyama, nor will he be sad. In the masjid right now, in every masjid, the Central Mosque in Leeds, in London, every masjid, there are people who have issues between themselves. I know about the issue in this masjid between Fulan and Alan. So the brother says, I'm not coming to that masjid anymore. No, as the Imam, I have to do something about the situation. I have to get on the member and make a tanbi and a tafkir. That, hey, you're sitting, you know who I'm talking about. I'm telling you, you have to make islah between you and that brother. And I have to do something about it. It's my religious responsibility. And you have to do the same thing. Your brother and his son, your nephew, they're issues. You have to get involved. You can't just leave it like that. Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Quran, Inna la nudir ajal muslihin. I will not cause the reward of the one who's a moderator, the muslih. I will not allow his reward to be lost. It's from the best issues in Al Islam. Perhaps you get involved in making a Muslim between your father and your mother. It can be from the best things that you did on this Friday. It can be from the best things. It is important in the deen. Now listen, I mentioned, the best case scenario is you and your wife try to solve the problem because if people get involved, they're going to hear, you're bakhil. The genesis of the problem between you and your wife is you're stingy. You don't take care of her. You have a girlfriend on the side. Your wife is doing this and that. Now people know about your asrar and your dhanub and your ma'asi. So don't be anid. Don't be mutakabir, arrogant. Sit down with the one you have the problem with and rectify it yourself. That's the best case scenario. Allah mentioned in the Quran for the husband and the wife, وَإِنْ إِمْرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ عَلَى نَفْسٍ وَإِنْ إِمْرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا نُشُوزًا أَوْ إِعْرَادًا فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا إِنْ يُسْلِحَا بَيْنُهُمَا سُلْحًا وَالسُلْحُ خَيْرٌ If the wife is afraid that her husband is going to treat her bad or her husband is going to turn his back and, and, and abandon her, leave her, she's married but not married, he makes i'rab, just doesn't give her a hop. Allah said, there's no problem and no blame on the two of them if they try to make islah between themselves. And asulh, islah is the best thing between him and her. And no one else got involved. That's the best case scenario. So as you sit there and you know you have issues with people because you loaned him money, he loaned you money, he's your son-in-law, your daughter-in-law, don't take sides and be a fitna. Get involved and make islah. But you, the one who has the problem, don't let people see your asrar. Who in his right mind is going to take his dahiliya clothes? And he's going to wash them and hang them up outside in front of everyone. Or not even wash them. Just put the dirty underclothes, underwear, just put it on display for everybody to see. Who's going to do that? Someone who doesn't have deen. Someone who doesn't have aql. So solve the problem. Now, the vast majority of us, we are looking at situations where people are not going to solve their problems. This is one of the reasons why Muslim countries go to war. The problems that we have. How many people have to get killed in Sudan and Habib 
before Muslims get involved. Why so many lives have to be lost? Or anywhere in the Muslim world, in Yemen, the Houthis, how many people have to be killed and murdered? Where is the rest of the Ummah getting involved? So the hukam are on a larger global scale of this fitna. We are microcosm of the fitna. Don't look at the hukam, look at yourself. Look at ourselves. What are you doing, Akhi Abu Umar? What are you doing, Sheikh? As it relates to being a key to help those people who you know are muhtarifin fi ma bainam fusib. What are you doing? It is an opportunity. As it relates to us getting involved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a number of ayat I want to share with you, inshallah. Like the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between the husband and the wife. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَأَحَكَمٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِسْلَاحٍ يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنُهُمَا If the girl, the lady, and her, and her husband, they are fighting, and you, the community, the relatives, if you're afraid that they're going to get a divorce, children are in the balance, man. Anybody who is here and he's divorced, and he has children by a woman who's divorced, they're going to be problems, even if you co-parent well. And usually co-parenting is not the norm. I'm upset with her, she's upset with me, and I neglect my children. I neglect my child, and I leave my cares without any deen and dawah and toji. And they're in this place in the wilderness. And it's one of the reasons the husband and the wife, one of the reasons, the family didn't get involved. So the ayah said, if you Muslims are afraid that they're going to get a divorce, then bring a mediator or an arbitrator from his side and bring an arbitrator from her side. If they want Islam, Allah will make it happen. So you shouldn't divorce the lady if you can help it until you try to solve the problem. It doesn't work before you divorce that lady Get her father involved, and your father. Get two people, one from his side, one from her. But the people who have intellect, not the mushawwishin kind of people, juhal, the muta'asibin, no. People you know have islah and khair inside of them. Another ayat of the Quran, and there are many. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Verily the believers are brother. The white, the black, the Arab, the rich, the poor, all of them are brothers. A sacred, a sacred institution in El Islam. And because they are brothers, you people make peace between them when they have ikhtilaf. In the hopes that Allah give you rahmah. You don't have the right to sit back and not do anything. You don't have that luxury. As a Muslim, I gotta do my job. Alhamdulillah, this is one of the benefits of having access to a member where people have to listen to you. So the message that I'll say, Ya Qiyamah, Ya Allah, now I know I'm taqsir, I have taqsir, but I told the Muslims, you have to try to get involved, man. You have to do something about the situation. Your children are fighting. Ikhtilaf, the oldest boy and the eldest girl, they're fighting. Don't take sides. Make islah, help them to love and understand. Sharpen your skills of being a Muslim by using your skills on those people who you are free to develop and sharpen your skills of al islah. Who in his right mind is going to let his children have civil rivalry and that's all they do is fight and that's it. And the person chalks it up and says, that's the sunnah, children fight. Nah, children don't always fight. I've seen relationships between certain kids where I have ghibta and hasid, where I say, oh, yeah, late. I just wish my children were like that. They get along. They have love. The elder one is merciful to the youngsters, and the younger ones respect the elder brother and sister. May Allah Ta'ala bless our children to be on that example. The point is, we have to make islah. You have to get involved. All of these ayat show the importance of the issue. From what we have to mention is the statement of Allah Ta'ala, 
لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. When people come together and they have a najwa, a najwa is when you and a few people are together and it's quiet and it's secret, away from the people. Usually those kind of meetings, it's fitting and facade. Like the Jama'at al-Islamiyya, Siyasiyya, the political groups, this is what they're known for. Secret meetings where they say things that they won't say to the public. There's the Usra and then there's the Kalam for the Afrad of the Usra. And then the Umara of every Usra comes and then they have another Kalam between them. That's a Najwa, La Khaira Fi. There's no benefit in that. No benefit in that. Secret meetings. Say to everybody what you'll say to individual if you really have something to say. The point I'm trying to make here is there are certain groups in Al Islam, that's their minhaj. And that's evil. Allah said, there is no benefit in many of the secret meanings that they have unless it's a secret meeting where the people come together and they are encouraging. We should make money, get money to give to the Messenger or to Flan, give money to Morocco, to Libya. We should do this, we should. Or, or they want to tell you ma'roof. Or they come together and say, we have to go make islah. So those ayat the lies which Joe showed us, many ayat, and more than what I'm mentioning today, are telling us, Ya Ikhwani, make Islah. Make Islah. The Prophet came out to his companion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and asked him a question that should give you an idea of the seriousness and the benefit of making Islam and being a Muslim. He asked the companions, and I asked you, I'm asking you, Radiallahu Anhu. Ala ukhbirukum bi afdal min daraja as siyam wal qiyam? Kalu bala ya Rasulullah. Kala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Islahu that al bayn. Should I tell you people what is better, higher in daraja? Afdal is better, higher, more virtuous than fasting and prayer. They say, yes, Ya Rasulullah, we want to know, because we want to do it. Not we just want to hear the knowledge and that's it. We want to know because we want to do it. And that's the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. Kanu ahras al nas on the khayr. We want to know. He said, what's better than fasting and what's better than prayer is you making islah, rectification between people, between your daughter and her estranged husband between you and your estranged wife, between two brothers who are arguing over money. Something happened, and this is what the Prophet said, that two Muslims will never become divided except because of a sin that one of them did. So because of that sin, we have the problem. He was talking to my daughter behind my back. Now I have a problem with him. He divorced my daughter. He's not taking care of my daughter. I have a problem with him. He's not making infaq on my daughter. So because of that sin, our relationships are compromised. You want to know what's better than salat and fasting? Making peace. When you pray, that's between you and Allah. And that's rewards for you. And reward by extension for your mother and your father and your grandmother and your grandfather because your actions go to them. But when you make islah, when you make islah, you have benefited those two people, you benefited the children that are connected to them, you benefited the masjid, the man is upset, he says, I'm leaving that masjid, I'm not going here anymore because I don't like the imam, I don't like the brother who's in the first row, I don't like this, I'm... nah man, when you go and you make islah between him and that person, he comes back to the masjid and he's giving sadaqah to the masjid. His sadaqah was gone, but you help the house of Allah now to get that money and to benefit. You helped Islam. So Al-Islah is better than prayer and it's better than fasting from that itibar, from that direction, from that connection. Khwani, listen. The Nabi told the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us something and I want you to remember this hadith. As long as you are alive, try to memorize this hadith. Go to Google and get this hadith and print it out, write it out, and put it on your refrigerator, man. Take this hadith 
and just tell people about this hadith, man. The Prophet said, بَلِّغُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةٍ Tell people about me if it's one thing. Tell the next man about this hadith. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ مِنَ النَّاسِ نَاسًا مفاتيح. مفاتيح. There are those people who are the keys that open the khayr and they close and they shut the doors of evil. And from the people of those people who are the keys that open up the doors of evil and they have the keys and they are keys that close, lock and shut the doors of good. He said, Tuba liman ja'alahullah, the jannah is for the one who Allah made him a key that opens up the door of good and closes the door of evil. And punishment, hellfire, Allah's angry, anger is for the one who is the key that does the opposite. You go to hellfire. Now we have people like that. We have that woman in the community who is very negative. Very critical, you can't do anything right. No one does anything right. People avoid her because of her evil, her evil mouth, her evil attitude, the negativity, the energy that comes from her is negative. Anyone who was positive naturally doesn't want to deal with her. She's that evil person. May Allah rectify our hearts. Wallahi, I know people like that. Evil, just evil. Not they make zina and drink, no, no. Their attitude, that not only do they say, they don't say the glass is half empty, as opposed to alhamdulillah, the glass is half full. They don't say the glass is half empty. They say, oh, the glass is dirty, the water is too hot, and that's how they are. Everything about them. Those are the people who have the keys of evil. They suffocate, smother, and kill the personality and the spirit of their child or the marriage or the daughter-in-law so we want to be the keys that open up the doors of good and we want to be the keys also that close the door of evil be a person who's given down with Allah give dawah to what is good dawah to what is beneficial take it easy relax give sadaqah get in the mashari and the programs and projects of spreading good أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ونسأل الله تعالى التوفيق والسداد الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوات الله والسلام على النبي الأمين بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح أمته يعني النصيح he gave advice to this community صلى الله عليه وسلم to that which is good I want to end by saying this يا أخي في الله you cannot be so whacked out so spaced out so off of the Sirat al-Mustaqeem and so off of your deen that when the Muslim gets involved to make islah between you and your brother, mother, father, whoever, that you get mad and upset at the brother, the messenger. You want to kill the messenger. The Imam gets up here to tell you, make islah between you and that brother. Allow, allow other people to make islah. The Imam is encouraging those who know about this situation, you got to get involved and make Islam. So the one who knows what I'm talking about in the community, he says, he gave a khutbah about me. And then he doesn't like me anymore. Man, I'm just a messenger. That brother is just a messenger. The sister is just a messenger. Don't kill the messenger. You can't kill the messenger. And if it wasn't for you, he wouldn't have gotten involved. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't allow us in our religion to kill the messenger. The man came from Persia and is very arrogant and was talking to Al Mustafa Al Mukhtar in the way that wasn't acceptable. He had the mustache that people have 
in Pakistan and places like that. A lot of times the generals and army personnel grow the mustache and it's like a bar like that. British people used to do that. It was a sign of a man being like a thespian, being muhazzab. That's from their way, his, his mustache. When the prophet saw his mustache, he said, who told you to do that? Why you, who told that? And he was arrogant. And he said, my Lord told me to do this. The leader of Persia, my Lord told me to do this. Rasulullah said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and my Lord, Allah, ordered me to trim my mustache and to leave my beard. That's our religion. He said, had it not been for the fact that messengers are not killed, I'd have dealt with you. Messengers are not killed, man, in any civilized society. He's just carrying the message. So don't get mad at people who get involved. Your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, don't get mad at them. Look at your own self. May Allah Ta'ala help us to make islah between our issues, our family members. May he solidify and protect our brotherhood and our families. May he help us to have patience to overlook the shortcomings of our queens. Yeah, I'm going to call them our queens, our wives who are not perfect. And from my experience and being in this earth, I'm the dean and in this earth, the vast majority of the problems between the husband and the wife, the vast majority of them, the genesis and the bidaya, they start with the husband. There are some women who are the cause of it starting, continuing, some women, but in my experience, it's usually the men, it's usually the husbands, myself included, myself included. You have a wife and we don't always manage and handle the thing the best way. Don't get divorced, ya akhi. Don't let your children be out, be without their father. It's going to have a knock-on effect and it's an evil result. Nothing but negativity comes from that. So we get involved with the goal of the objective of protecting our community members and our family members. And Allah Ta'ala is the wali of dharika and he is qadirun alayhi al-islah, al-islah, al-sulhu khair. Make peace between yourselves. Akam al-salat, yarhamukum Allah, wa ahsan Allah ilaykum. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتي فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر الحمد للہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین ایاک نعبد و ایاک نستعین اہدن الصراط المستقیم صراط الذین انعمت علیہم غیر المغضوب علیہم ولا الضالین آمین انما المؤمنون اخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر 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 الله أكبر